All right, once again, welcome back to essentially step function learning tutorial series for beginners, right? Uh, this is going to be tutorial number four, where we are going to learn about the catch block in the step function. Tutorial one was theory, tutorial number two was a hello world, tutorial number three was a retry, tutorial number four, this one is going to be about catch block. So here I'm going to be showing you how you can ca catch error and do branching based on your errors, right? So this video is specifically about that. Let's get started. So I'll be I'll be sharing my screen and by by as usual we'll be reading some definition and then you know try to understand more and more about that. Uh, so you know you have something called catch block. So use the step function console. So here they are saying you know they're describing how to essentially use a catch block, right? So if you want uh, you can come here and read more about the theory part, right? As you can see. So for example, when a particular lambda fails, what I'm trying to, now we are, let me, this is the scenario. So, uh, so this is your start function. Your lambda was invoked, right? Now you want to say that, hey, if this uh, essentially returns an error, let's say PyODBC error or connection error, I want to essentially call some lambda, else I want to, if, if again, or if for example, let's say it timed out, I want to call something else, else I want to do something else else if there is no error go to the end state that means it's complete right so all that branching based on error you could do that right so when something fails you want to you know publish to sqs or dead letter queue or s3 or publish an sns whatever you want to do right so that's the goal of this video so this this should be familiar with you yeah you guys have been doing this from uh tutorial number one right so i'm saying that i have a state one right which is going to be my lambda function uh, this lambda function is going to be this one. So I'll copy the ARN shortly and uh, we will dump this ARN here. Okay. So this should be familiar guys. As I said, right, there's nothing new. We have done this several times. Retry should be uh, familiar as well that we did in tutorial number three. So please go and read that. So now comes the catch block. So here you can catch various errors. As you can see, I'm saying if the error equals to custom error, this can be PyODBAC error, request error, timeout error, you can essentially provide a comma separated values in an array. If that happens, I'm saying that, hey, go to a next state called custom error fallback. This is a state which can be a Lambda, which can be SNS, could be anything, okay? So that's one scenario. Now, if task failed, which means the task itself failed, then I want to go to, you know, some other uh, essentially um, branching logic, right? So as you can see, then we are providing the next block here, right? Or if anything in general fail, which means if the task dot all fail, right? If the task fail, then I want to go to catch all fallback. I want to essentially go to that block, right? So now you could define, so every state has a following item, a type resource, Retry is an optional, right? Catch is also an optional, but now we are providing custom catch block. And then we are saying end as true, which means there's nothing after, after the, at the end of this, okay? Then remember all that state that you named, you have to define that. So here I'm saying type as pass. I'm just simulating here. I, you can fire up a Lambda by saying type as task and pro providing a resource block. And then end as true. Similarly for um, catch all fallback and reserve type fallback. So if I try to copy this, okay, and I want to show you how this looks like in the state machine. So if we come here in the edit state machine schema, and by the way, tutorials are there. So this would be lab number four. You can come and uh, review things here. So coming back here, uh, okay, I have a name issue. Let me fix my names. So this is state one. This has to be also state one, right? We want to make sure we are consistent enough. All right, so I'll try to show you what it says. So I'm saying that, hey, uh, come here, execute the state one, everything went well, then just end it. If there is custom error, go to some logic and do something. Maybe do logging, S3, publish to an SNS and an email notification, a reserve type fallback and catch all fallback. In general, if any, all the state fails, go to this block, if not this block. So based on a particular error, you have the ability guys to branch out, out of a logic. So in the previous scenario, I, I simulated an event called throttling, right? By purposely giving a reserved concurrency of zero. And then I purposely added uh, the timeout in the Lambda as three seconds. So the Lambda essentially fails. 
so that I could show you the retry logic. But here I want to show you the error handling logic. Okay, so uh, so for example, I will come here. So let me go back to my state machine. So here comes the the catch block custom error, right? So now if you want, uh, you know, you could essentially based on, let me try. I'm trying to purposely uh, invoke an error here, okay? So I'll deploy this. So the Lambda is born to fail, okay? It's never gonna work because I have an exception block. Uh, this looks good and I just wanna try this out too if it, if it works. So I'll click on save anyways, heading over back to my state machine. And then I'll click on start execution, pass any random JSON to it, doesn't matter really. So now it's at the state one, remember, Lambda will fail, it is also gonna do a retry, remember. So, so the first time it will fail, it's gonna try a retry after an interval of one second, then it's gonna try for maximum two times, and then it's gonna do a back off strategy after every two seconds, okay? So it's technically I'm expecting about four seconds or six seconds, uh, after which uh, the state machine sh should start failing, right? So here you are seeing like amazing, beautiful scenarios. You could, um, how complex workflows you can design in st uh, step functions, right? I have, I personally really loved it. I'll also show you uh, maybe down the line where we are gonna go into design patterns. One of the popular design pattern is async pattern, which means Taco Bell is also using this to essentially get orders and I'll show you all that as we proceed in the tutorials, okay? It doesn't really make sense for me to show everything in one sense, right? Uh, so let's wait. Remember, it's gonna try uh, because we have a retry logic, right? So we need to wait and we need to be patient, okay? If you want, uh, if you want, we could have removed the retry block and just showed you the catch scenario, okay? But let's let's be patient. As you can see, it might take a couple of seconds. I'm assuming it's gonna go to uh, one of the states, depending upon what happened, right? Either a custom error or a state task failed, right? It should essentially branch to the appropriate logic, okay? That's the goal over here. Um, so as you can see now, the state failed, right? Now it's in the orange state, uh, which is caught an error, right? So it went to my green block, which is reserve type fallback. And if you observe, I have a output here, right? So um, as you can see, right? So reserved fallback, which is right here, right? So it went over here. So if the task failed, right? Because the task failed, which is why it went over to this state here, right? So as you can see, you know, all this beautiful stuff, you could do that in the step functions, right? And if you want, you can come more, you can come to the website and explore more, right? So for example, when a task fail, I wanna publish an SNS, right? I wanna do something, right? You could define all those scenarios. Now the reason also it went to this particular guy, let me come back and he went to here and not here because remember we had mentioned there is an exception and we also said if there is any in general, if a task fail, then go to that, which is why it went there. But if you really wanna catch particular uh, errors, you can absolutely remove these general catch blocks and you can have add a custom block in that scenario, those are gonna branch towards that logic. Um, and as you can see here, right, uh, if you come to the to the website and they, they essentially have showed all these scenario here, right? So as you can see, type, resource, catch, custom error, right? So I'm essentially taking from uh, their Amazon website, right? I have learned personally from, from their website, right? So end true, uh, custom fallback, right? And it's returning some dummy, a dummy mock data, in which case you could fire it to SNS or SQS or whatever you uh, want to do based on that error handling, right? Well, I hope you have enjoyed it and I, have, I hope you have enjoyed all these tutorials on how you can, you know, slowly, gradually progress in the step functions, right? Where in the first part, we did a hello world. Second part, we showed you how to attach a Lambda. Third part, we did a resource, a retry. And then the fourth part, we did a, a, essentially a catch block. Now, the next part of the prop would be essentially branching based on the input, right? So we'll learn how to add a custom if statement. For example, if the data is greater, if the age was greater than 200, go to state A, else go to state B. So all those branching conditions would be there in the upcoming videos, that is tutorial number five, six, seven, and so on, right? And as we keep progressing, then we'll go to the patterns, uh, async patterns, right? 
and all that is coming down the pipeline. I hope you have enjoyed it. I'm trying to keep these sessions small, sweet, so you can follow along with me. And with that being said, if you have any questions, please put your question in the comments. If I haven't answered, I'll take a look at it and I'll, I'll try my best to answer all your questions. With that being said, keep smiling, keep programming, and a simple like and a share to the video would be really appreciated because creating tutorial is a very lengthy task because you gotta prepare labs, you gotta prepare material, and record it, then do pre-processing. So all I'm asking in return, a simple thumbs up to show your support to me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in next upcoming session.